Nobody wants to get united. Like, what we got to do is meet everybody in 149th Street at the bench. All right, welcome to the bench, everybody. This is going to be a rebirth of a somewhat old-style uh, critique series I had started named Feedback Friday, but uh, with a bit of a spinoff. My good friend John Grimm has uh, been posting videos under the series The Bench, basically a critique series in which uh, artists submit their work, and he gives them constructive criticism in which that they can uh, take and learn from and develop their styles. Uh, based on his kind of feedback. So uh, I had been posting critique videos and those didn't go so well, but uh, John hit me up and uh, wanted to uh, kind of give a new overhaul to uh, his series and include myself and one other artist here on YouTube who goes by Voice One. I'll link you to all their stuff down below. But uh, basically just uh, have us critique some other people's work and give uh, honest feedback to uh, what they're doing and how they can improve and uh, this series is really just geared for helping not only the artist that's getting the specific critique but anybody watching that they can learn uh, some really crucial things to help their uh, style improve and now I won't sit here and preach to you that I'm gonna be uh, better than everybody else or that I know something that you don't but this is just my honest review I'd say and critique of uh, the submitted work and uh, anyone can uh, submit work. You can uh, submit it to my Facebook page or to my email. I'll link both of them in the description. But uh, basically, I'll select one a week. And I'm thinking every Monday, I'll upload a video critiquing uh, a piece of work. And if your stuff doesn't make it to the video, don't worry. I'll always uh, do a text critique um, ahead of time or uh, whatever if you're interested in that. But uh, basically, if uh, you haven't seen any of the other Bench videos, definitely go over to the playlist uh, that John Grimm has already kind of compiled all of his into. And it's a really good foundation. It um, helps you to kind of learn a lot of the technical uh, terminology I'll be using and so forth, as he does a really good job explaining it. And he's got to have uh, maybe 15 or 20 videos deep already of... Um, critiques much like this style but uh this will uh, be all my opinion on some uh, separate work from his as well as voice one i don't believe he's posted his first video yet on a critique of someone's work but um he should be uh shortly so watch out for that and uh we're gonna get right into it so i've got this submission from xer he uh sent me over a um just a little sketch piece on uh slap and uh it's a really good piece i want to start off with saying that he's got some really really uh good uh, aesthetic going for him. So uh, I think the first thing I need to kind of bring to attention is his kind of structure of the piece itself. Now, uh, most people kind of don't really think of this until afterwards. I know if I've only started to really consider some, some of these things myself and kind of laying out a piece, but uh, he's got this really nice kind of pentagon look going to it. So he, he's got the nice angle up on the back of the E and then a flat top and then down on the R and uh, then the flat bottom obviously for his entire uh, piece. And that gives a really just nice overall look of how the piece looks as itself as you can uh, kind of play around with the shapes in which your letters take as a whole and then each letter individually to make up that overall shape. And he's done a really nice job to uh, use the three letter aesthetic to kind of create the Pentagon look. Now he's got a really consistent style throughout his piece, which I think is hard for a lot of people to uh, kind of acquire and do because uh, you always want to do something different with each letter and that he's done a really nice job to incorporate the same kind of overlapping style I'm not sure exactly how to call it but where each piece kinda has little notches and then the extra little hookups here and there to uh, really benefit the piece as a whole so I think that worked really well and on top of that the color combo is simple for sure just seeing as a pretty much just a green with some variations of yellow in here on like the different highlights of the points and maybe a little bit darker green in here but then just the simple pink uh, outline really works well, and that shows you that you don't need to have a super elaborate fill to get a nice looking uh, piece for you. And especially um, with all these kind of black accents, he's done a really nice job to uh, just not have it just be the solid green fill. He's got a lot of, uh, not hookups, but just extra pieces to uh, really get the letters to look cool. So uh, the first thing I would have to say about um, the piece is that the E... The bottom of the E is a big sour spot for me. As um, the E looks, I'll kind of outline it for you here um, so you can know where I'm referring to. But So we got the E kind of kinks up and then the middle bar right there. 
So personally, I don't think the high kink on the bottom works very well for him. And that's only because it's hitting the top of the the E, that very top bar, whereas the bottom bar, I don't know, generally shouldn't. Um, in my opinion, it's really, really overbearing. So one thing to consider is that he could either just skinny it out and uh, kind of cut it lower, or what I've gone ahead is utilize the fact that the bottom of the E also has a very similar aesthetic to the bottom of the, the R right here, because both of them have that kink piece, as well as... Um, kind of a they need a way to be finished off so what I've gone ahead is actually just kind of crudely photoshopped uh, the bottom of the K exactly onto it now um, I'll zoom out a little bit so you can get like the overall feel for it but um, basically it also allows the flow to be kind of consistent now you wouldn't have to do the exact same one obviously I just cropped it on top but it'll give you a good sense as to what it would look like if uh, he had gone ahead and done the same thing because before having the curl going back, he almost has this curl going forward, um, which kind of gives an awkward flow since this one's going forward, this one's going back, then this one's going back, and this one's going back. I don't know that uh, that worked overly well for him, but um, just something to consider that uh, kind of having the same bottom to two of the letters really incorporates a consistent style. Now, uh, on to the next piece. I'll leave that up as we go. The top of the E kind of gives a weird um, look as it potentially is a lowercase e. It could very well be, um, let me go back to my red, but it could very well be that this is the top head of the E and then this is the bottom. But that being said, then this middle bar that comes through here that I'm kind of wiping out, you don't really know where that comes from. So that's either leaving it up to the viewer or you, he needs to express a little bit better if it's coming from the bottom of the X and up through there. Then he uh, needs to express that a little bit better. But with the top of the E, just simply erasing out that little I section, like an eyeball section, I like to call it that, uh, really gives a better aesthetic as to it's a solid flat top. But also with that, um, now he's got a really big area that isn't really addressed anywhere else in the piece. Um, seeing as this bar of the K is about one thickness of my line, this one's got three high and two wide, I'd say, um, thickness, so it's a lot bigger of an area, so that would just have to be considered toned down maybe, but that's all left to the artist. I'm just going to be assessing it. And so back to this kind of cut through piece, um, as you can see, even without uh, the curl, you really don't know where this piece is coming from. Um, so putting the curl back, I've gone ahead and just kind of cut it down so you can really get the aesthetic of an actual E in there. And doing this, I feel, has now shown that this uh, bottom bar to the E has really kind of jumps really straight up. Um, just like I said, cutting it back and allowing it to be the actual part of the E um, really supports the structure of the letter and that it doesn't need to be super elaborate um, even though he's got all these extra bits on it it doesn't need to be super elaborate structure to have a really nice look and focusing on having a really nice kind of structure to your letter will just help you tenfold in the end and really just benefit uh, everything in your piece so um, I think the last piece I wanted to touch on is the top of this R now uh, back to structure of the letter the R can either have a rounded uh, top or he's pretty much gone ahead and done a pointed top. Um, it can work both ways, but I feel this kind of jagged piece down on the end has hurt him more than helped him because uh, then the leg kind of comes out and they intersect a bit too much to my liking. Um, and I think it just kind of looks a little wonky there. So a more rounded piece would allow this kink to kind of flow right below it without them intersecting and creating this kind of awkward triangle negative space that's much like the eye of the R. Um, so I've gone ahead and just barely rounded out. Uh, you could have He could have rounded out 10 times more and made this a perfect round because he, he does have round pieces in the, in the piece itself, so it's not like um, he was only using straight lines because there are plenty of rounded sections uh, that he could uh, utilize to make the piece uh, have a more rounded tip to the R, but even just taking off the little um, the little notch right here has allowed for a really really clean transition between the top of the R and that leg. So 
that in mind, you know, just making sure your letters flow with one another. Um, he's done a really nice job. The only thing that I think is really missing in the piece is 3D. Um, it would allow for a lot more uh, neutralizing with the black. Um, he doesn't. You wouldn't even have to do it all black. Just something else would allow for this solid pink space to kind of be neutralized a little bit as um, the border force field is really thin, but then in here there's a lot more pink. So just consider that as... Um, it's a little, uh, I think, kind of skinny in there. I like to add 3D to all my stuff, even if it's the most basic and really thin. It always seems to benefit, um, unless you really kind of mess it up. But always do it in pencil first, and then if it doesn't look good, just retry. And uh, if you like the critique, let me know. If you have some uh, constructive criticism for him, leave him in the description, as he went out on a whim to have uh, me do this live, post a video, do it all. And uh, if you don't feel I touched on something, or you feel that uh, my assessment was wrong, please leave it in the description as uh, this is the first video in the series since uh, I kind of gave it up a while ago and uh, just looking to get back into it and uh, let me know what you think. Um, if you want to submit work, like I said, I have a Facebook page and my email where you can just send me photos and uh, every week I'll be posting these videos as well as Grim and Voice One will be posting them. I'm not sure their schedule exactly but uh, they'll be posting them pretty frequently and uh, hoping just to help you guys learn a little bit and so you don't make the mistakes uh, as I did and I'm sure they both did um, as they were learning because most of you guys do not have mentors and it's really killing everyone to uh, make them see people make the same mistakes over and over that could be quickly addressed with uh, just watching a few of these videos. So if you like the video, hit me up with a like. Go definitely subscribe and like uh, their videos as... Uh, I wouldn't be doing this without uh, John Grimm's help, and uh, that's really going to do it for me. Peace.